Adams. Oh, sh what? Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey guys, what's up? Dark Owl here. Um, today we're going to talk about a couple of things. I'm not going to ramble a bunch like I normally do. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the Vader and we're going to kind of fix some things. I've already started. I have to replace the stock speedometer. I ended up purchasing an aftermarket one from Amazon. It is obviously a Chinese device. In theory, it should connect directly to it without any problems. However, um, I noticed that the pins in the stock one that came with the bike aren't lined up in the correct holes as this aftermarket one. So what I had to do was take my stock wiring harness from the stock speedometer and I looked at the wires, the main ones, for t the power on and turn signal, brights, everything like that in the speedometer and what i did was i took the aftermarket speedometer and i put those same colored wires in the correct positions so that way when i plug in the aftermarket speedometer into the stock wiring harness it will work perfectly so that's as far as we've gotten it turns on turn signals work brights work uh it all comes on so what we need to do next is figure out the gearing. Now the stock speedometer has five pins only because this is, this is a four speed. So with five, first gear, neutral, second, third, and fourth. It's only got four speeds, so you gotta count neutral. So there's five pins that need to be moved around. So that way when we do turn the bike on, it will give us the correct reading as we go through the gears. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take the stock wiring harness that comes out of the bike, we're gonna snip that, and we're gonna turn that into a female because the aftermarket speedometer is a male connection. So we'll have that, that should all be fixed. That takes t care of two issues, not anything big to me. The third one is trying to figure out how to bolt this in. So that's what we're gonna do. Later, if I have time in this video, I wanna talk about the DLX and the titling process and how that went for me. Um, it was kind of a fiasco, but we'll get to that towards the end of the video. I also wanna point out that I bought aftermarket mirrors. If you remember my very first Grom clone videos of the Teo Teo Hellcat, these are the same ones. These things are awesome. They aren't bar end. I opted out for the bar end style just because on a smaller bike, I think it's weird having bar ends that stick out so much, or even, I, I don't like having them tuck under where my hand is, because then my arm gets in the way. Not a fan of that, so I do like mine up and out, but on such a small bike, I don't like how they stick really far out like that when you do the bar ends. So I did it off the posts here. My master cylinder up here does not have a spot for a mirror, so what we're going to do is, we're gonna take an old bracket, for the left side, for your clutch, I have one, and it will fit nicely in here if I scoot this over. We're gonna put it inside here and clamp that on also, but I have to cut down the spot where the clutch lever would have fit into it, so we're gonna cut that off so it's just the post where you can mount the mirror in, and then we'll have a mirror on that side. It's just a small piece of metal that bolts onto your um, handlebar, and we'll do that. But right now, we're gonna start with this guy. I'm gonna mount my microphone on my hoodie here. So what I need to do is, as you can see, it, it comes on when it's not supposed to sometimes, and that's just because of the connections in here. What I think I'm gonna do is manually adjust these pins in here. They're all in the correct positions now, and it's connected into the stock wiring harness. I will show you real quick. It comes on, and it looks great. Can change the colors, it shows my fuel level, perfect. Swapped out and switched it, I guess, not necessarily swapped out, but I switched it to miles per hour. Everything looks great. Um, turn signals work. Brights work. So that's what shows up on here. Now we need to connect these pins right here. This is, like I said, this one has six on it. So this goes up to five speeds, I, I believe, and a possible six speed is one of these other ones. So it would show a sixth gear 
and I believe it's this yellow and red one here, but we don't need that and we definitely don't need the fifth gear in here. So we'll only have five pins from this to figure out which is which. We need to take this off. There's four of these, one on top, one on bottom. This will make it a lot easier to actually get in here and uh, mess with these wires. So let's go ahead and get all these off. I like that the clock stays on. That's kind of cool, it gives you a clock on this one. The stock speedometer, I don't think has a clock if I remember. I do need to, however, go in here once it's all connected. We need to set the diameter of the tire spec, the wheel, and how many magnets or the pulse so that way you get an accurate uh, speed reading. And the cool thing with this one is, since it's an aftermarket one, you can kind of fine tune it to get a real accurate reading. You can compare it to a GPS uh, reading if you want. You can use it and kind of get an average, you know, use several different GPS apps. There's a few out there that are pretty, pretty accurate and uh, they're really good to use. And that way you can compare and adjust what you need to adjust on your unit to get an accurate speed reading. So let's go ahead and pop this off. I think this thing looks so sick. This is like my favorite Grom front fascia look. I think that thing looks, it almost looks like a robot or like something off of uh, Destiny. Okay, so we're gonna unplug this cable right here. If you can see this blue, white, and green is your headlights. And then these are your turn signals. Light blue is right, orange is left, and then your ground for the aftermarket anyway. Stock turn signals are gonna be uh, green, green and orange, and then green and light blue. So your green is your ground. Uh, these pins, me telling you what I'm doing is very, very easy and simple. I could probably show you in here because I have to do it anyway. Hopefully I can get close enough. But there are pins in there and they have a little tab at the base of each one. And what we want to do is push them flat on each one. We want to push the pin flat so that way they can actually be pulled out just like that. There's a little tab right here. There's that little tab. See it sticking up? We're pushing these tabs down with something like a pick set like this. So that way you can pull them out. Very easy to do. So we're doing this on the speedometer itself. And I should be able to just pull all the, yep, they're coming out easy. This one is stuck just a little bit. So I just need to go in and make sure that there's no tension on it. And then I push it down and it should pop out. So we've got it popped out. Very, very simple. So this is what we've got. All these loose wires now with all those little male connections. We got to figure out what's what on here with this. So again, let's do the same with these. So now we've got both male connections here, just like that. Now, like I said, you can buy these and buy the female ones and cut those off and then put them on. And that way you can have a male and a female and just connect it easily once you have figured out the pin positions. But right now we're going to plug in our main connector here, which gives you power to your speedometer and line this up. This should be fairly straightforward since we already worked on that. Okay, there's some tension. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure with my pin thing here, my little pokey poke, make sure that these are all fairly spaced out nicely. So that way each pin can go in like it's supposed to. Yeah, we just gotta bend them a little bit. There we go. There we go. It's on, we've got everything on there. It says we're in first gear. The gear went away. So I'm gonna hold these up, hold this up just like this. And we should be in neutral. I'm gonna check by tilting the bike. Nope, we're in gear. So that should be first gear. We should be in first gear. So I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna find first gear on here. That's a female connection, so I know those aren't what we need. We just gotta find where the current is going through. We've got two reds, red and white, red and black, purple, brown and white, and a red and green. Let's try the, let's try this. This is fifth. Nope. Nope, okay. So this is gonna be fairly easy. All of these have electricity going through them. 
Well, okay, I take that back. Not all of them. One of them does. So when you turn your bike on from the stock wiring harness, one of these is gonna have a current going through it. That one is gonna be first gear when you put it in first gear. So you could take all these tabs and they may not show up anything, but what it's gonna tell you is, is what these cables are from the speedometer itself. So when you have current going through just one of these, you'll know, and I think, let me do this again, it doesn't matter what I take, but here we'll go. There, nothing, nothing. Okay, purple, purple right here, purple and, yeah, it's just a purple one. Purple has the current going through it. So we know that's first because my gear selector is in first gear. So now, no matter what one you put up to it from the speedometer, it's gonna tell you what gear these wires are. So what you could do is touch each one to this wire that has the current coming through it and you can label each one. So if I take this yellow one up and put it on there, yellow is fifth gear. We know that pink is first gear, so that's what we want. Blue here is second. This black and green is third. So you can mark these down. Red and green is neutral. Red and green's neutral. And this red and white is fourth. So now I know what's what. I don't need the yellow one. So yellow is fifth. We don't have a fifth gear. So we need to just work with these. All right, so I'm gonna unplug this real quick and I'm going to label all of these, which would be a good idea. Now that we know which one's which, we can go off of that. So we know that right now, since it's in first gear on the bike, purple is our hot wire for the gear selector. And we know that that's first gear. So once we touched all of these cords from the speedometer up to that one that has the current going through it, it told us that our pink wire is our first gear. So it's indicating that's what we wanna to connect to. Then you'll do the same. You'll go up to neutral. You'll find your neutral, neutral wire on this side of your stock wiring harness. Go through the same process and fight, figure out each gear is that way and then go through each one, connect them and you will be good. We've got the speedometer on. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. It's all connected and everything. The speedometer is getting there in terms of speed and me fine tuning it in. Uh, I put one mile on it, cool. So I did a, a test ride, drive, whatever you wanna call it. The gas thing, it's kind of funny. So the gas level is not super accurate right now. Um, I know I need to go in and adjust that as well. Speed, not super accurate as well. Something again, I need to go in and adjust. Totally doable. But other than that, everything works. The gears work. I can go down in first gear. I think I showed all that. Back in neutral and we're, we're rolling the bike. So it's, it's working. Everything works. I just need to fine tune it a little bit so that way I can get the speed to be accurate. And so that way I can get um, the fuel to be accurate. But other than that, it's, it's all connected. It works. You get a diagram, a wiring diagram when you get your speedometer let's say you purchase this one i'll put a link in the description if you want to upgrade and swap yours and it shows you what each wire is on the aftermarket speedometer so that thing will be on the road super soon pretty stoked about that however this bike right here this thing is a beast i gotta get a new front inner tube for it and some aftermarket tires and Stuff like that, aftermarket tires. Uh, I want to get some new tires, not the knobbies. I'm going to get some street tires for it. But I wanted to talk about real quick the titling process. So the titling process in Illinois was a little bit frustrating for this. There's a specific place that I go to to get it titled and get it plated. Never had a problem. I've done so many Chinese bikes. It's, it's never been an issue. But with this one, the reason why it was an issue for me is I got plates for it. And then by the end of the day, before they were about to close, I got a text saying I needed to bring the plates back. So the reason why is in Illinois, if you want to buy one of these, it's going to be hard to get it plated is because it says off-road motorcycle on the bill of sale. And it also says off-road motorcycle on the MSO, which is your manufacturer country of origin. So since it says off-road motorcycle in Illinois anyway, it used to be that you could take this bike to the Illinois Secretary of State Police. You'd be able to get an inspection of it. 
And if it checked all the boxes, having the turn signals, headlight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all that good stuff that makes it road legal, they would either pass it or deny it if it did not. And then you would take that to the DMV and you would get a plate for it if it, if it passed. Well, I called a couple of phone numbers and uh, the Secretary of State Police. I called them and they said, Illinois does not do that anymore. It's something they don't do for obvious reasons. I was told because something about highway speeds and the safety, there, since it's an off-road bike, they don't know if the bike is capable in a safe manner, manner or something like that. I don't know. Some sort of BS answer. But, but I understand. I get it. So the only way I was able to title this and get it plate not titled, the only way I was able to get plates for it was if I could get a hold of the manufacturer or somebody to change on the bill of sale and the MSO, MCO, either or, and have it say just motorcycle. So I had to jump through some loops, send some emails, make some phone calls. I called the place where I ordered this from and I told them, I said, hey, well, first off I asked, I said, is this bike street legal for street use? And the woman said, yes, it absolutely is. A lot of our bikes are. They were, you know, the ones that come with all the bells and whistles are street legal. So I stopped her there and I said, okay, well, I did purchase this particular bike and I've been told that I cannot register it. So that's a problem. I bought a bike and I can't get it, you know, registered or I can't get it plated. So that's a problem. You know, I want to get it plated and be able to ride with my friends and stuff. So if it is marketed as street legal, I mean, it comes with a plate holder, everything. I said, the hiccup is that it says motorcycle off-road or off-road motorcycle. So is there any way to get that changed? I had to send a few emails. It wasn't guaranteed. But luckily, guys, luckily, in the mail, I they just shipped it out. They I got an email saying it was auto-generated saying that your MSO, your bill of sale have been shipped out. And I'm thinking, okay, well, they never said anything really that it was changed or whatnot. So I'm in, in my mind, I'm thinking they're, they're just going to send it out and it's going to be the same thing. And I'm going to have to chalk it up and just keep it. Cause I really love the bike. Maybe I'll just use it off road with a couple of my buddies that have some off road bikes anyway, but it came in the mail and they switched both of them. They never said anything, but they, they switched them. Both of them say motorcycle. So we're going to go ahead and get this plated guys. And, uh, this bike will definitely be on the road uh, next. So this is next what I need to work on. It's just getting that front inner tube and street tires next and then getting it plated and then we will be good to go. But this video has gone far over than I wanted it to. So a lot of, a lot of information to give you guys a lot of stuff to edit. We're going to get that plated as well and get it on the road. Caleb's going to be getting his Grom clone. Steve's got his monkey. I think he might even get a Grom himself. So whether or not he gets something at least he's get, we all got 125s and the plan is to get on the road and kind of just mob it for you guys and have fun and get some cool content for you so uh, with that being said you guys know what to do stay safe ride safe and i will see you guys in the next video peace